Fujifilm X100V is a beautiful camera, but just how good is it for street photography? Well, I spent last year capturing a whole collection of street photographs using the X100V, and this is my 12 month review. Now the Fujifilm X100V is it any good for street photography? Well, spoiler alert, it's absolutely fabulous. And it's the camera I reach for when I'm about to venture out into the city to capture some street photographs. Now I have a number of cameras, so why do I reach for the X100V? Well, there are several reasons, so let me go through them. First, I have to mention the retro style. And now you should never choose a camera based on the way it looks, and that'd be silly, wouldn't it? But there's something about that styling that kind of puts me in the right mindset. I mean, it puts me in the zone and makes me excited about street photography. And I will hold my hands up and I will say I am probably the ideal Fuji consumer. I'm totally taken in by that lovely styling. But if it's going to help to put me in the zone, that can only be a good thing, can't it? And of course, with that retro styling comes the old school way of changing settings. It has an aperture ring on the front of the lens, allowing me to change aperture size in the old school way. It has physical dials on the top of the camera to adjust the shutter speed and the ISO. So it's all very ergonomically laid out and quite tactile. So you actually feel like you're a part of the camera when you dial in those changes, rather than it being a digital procedure. So does that make a difference to your photography? Well, of course it doesn't, but it may make a difference to you. Now, I know it does to me, so what are the useful features does it have then? Well, it has a flip up screen rather than a flip out screen. And I think the flip up screen is so much better for street photography. It allows you to be more inconspicuous as you can hold the camera at waist height, flip the screen up towards you and simply look down to compose your shot. And that way you draw less attention to yourself. Now it's so much better than the flip out screen, which I think makes it a little bit more obvious that you're about to capture a photograph. Now, of course, if you're into street photography, do you really need the X100V? Well, of course you don't. You'll get great street photographs with any camera. And I've captured some amazing street shots with all of my cameras. I use Sony, I use Olympus, and being a teacher, I've tried and owned pretty much every brand of camera. Indeed, I actually did sell my previous Fuji camera and went full on Sony. Now I love Sony and I still shoot with Sony, but it does feel like a very technical tool without a heart. Sorry, Sony. <laughs> Fuji cameras, however, have heart and soul and can be your best friend. So I had to purchase another one. So why did I pick the X100V? Well, I wanted to challenge myself. And the thing about the X100V is that it has a fixed 35 millimeter lens. Now it's 23 millimeters, but the 35 mil equivalent or full frame equivalent is 35 millimeters. And that's often seen as the ideal focal length for street photography. Now I'm restricted to that focal length, but that's a good thing because as I say, 35 millimeter is perceived arguably as the perfect focal length for street shooting. So I kind of like that. Now you can add a 50 millimeter conversion lens, which simply screws into the fixed lens, but I've never really felt the need to do that. So the camera puts me where I want to be with the retro style and that tactile feeling and the fixed 35 millimeter lens. It leads me down a path to capture great street photographs. And of course, another thing is the Fuji film simulations. Now I shoot in RAW and I apply a lot of stuff in Lightroom and Photoshop as we all do. But just know that the JPEGs from Fuji cameras with the film simulation are fantastic. And in some cases, you don't have to do any corrections to your photographs. So that's another good thing. Now, I remember when I first got the camera delivered, I decided to go into Liverpool city centre. Now I took the bus and when I jumped off the bus, I found myself in the middle of a street demonstration. Now it was a demonstration for LGBTQ rights. 
and there were so many photo opportunities, but I hadn't really set the camera up. I'd actually left home without dialing in any settings. Now, I'll talk about settings later. So as I say, I hadn't dialed in those suitable settings. I still managed to capture this shot. Now it's a little bit out of focus because I hadn't set the focus into where I would like it to be, but more on that later. So this was the first photograph I captured with the X100V and straight away I knew I was hooked. This is the camera for me for all my street photographs. Now that summer when I wasn't teaching, you'd find me on the streets of Liverpool capturing a whole collection of street photographs. And it was so much fun, such a joy to use, such a small camera and yet so capable. Now I shoot in colour and I convert to black and white later. I always have that dilemma, do I choose colour or black and white? But that's the beauty of editing it, isn't it? Shooting colour and then you can make that decision later on. Now, as you know, there are many ways to make that conversion to black and white. You can indeed use the Fujifilm X Raw Studio software. Now, I'm not going to go into that, but basically you connect your camera to your computer and use the software in combination with your camera to access all the film simulations and tonal adjustments and options that the camera will give you. And that's quite cool, isn't it? Now, I don't do that, but it's nice to know that I have that option. So how do I approach my street photography? Well, I use a number of techniques. I will either just walk around with the camera switched on and ready to shoot, and I'll be super observant and capture what I see. That fleeting moment, that tiny candid moment in time, that piece of social history. Or I stay in the one place and I wait for the action to come to me. Or sometimes I plan my shots. I find an interesting location or composition and simply wait for the shot to appear. Now, if you want to know more about those techniques, I have produced a Skillshare class called the Rs of Street Photography, and you can always pop across and watch that. Now, links are in the description below. Now, settings then. What settings do I use? Now, firstly, I would say that all photographers do things slightly differently. And the settings I use work for me, and perhaps another photographer could tell you to do some things completely differently. And of course, their way could be just as good as what I do. It doesn't really matter. It's what is a good fit for you. So I can only tell you the settings that I use and what works for me. So with that said, what do I do? Well, in daylight, I will set the aperture size anywhere between f8 and f11. Now it's normally set to f8, to be honest. And that way, if you know anything about aperture sizes, you would know that my subject would be in focus and the majority of the background would be in focus too. And that's quite important as what you're doing is capturing your subject within a certain environment and recording a small slice of daily life. And the background helps to produce and record that fleeting moment in that certain place and time, adding context and atmosphere. And it all comes together to make a beautiful photograph, hopefully. So F8 will do that, F11 even better, but it depends on how bright the day is. And in the UK, we don't get enough sunny days. So I'm often found around F8. Now from a shutter speed, I will vary between 250th of a second and 500th of a second. Now it's a really bright day. I have the luxury of choosing 500th of a second. If it's not so bright, I'll slow the shutter down to say 250. Now those shutter speeds ensure that I am gonna freeze the action which is important, especially if I'm walking and hand holding the camera. Now, of course, faster shutter speeds will freeze the action even more and possibly give you a sharper image. But combined with the chosen aperture size, it may mean you have a higher ISO value and risk introducing unwanted noise. So as always, it's that balancing act between those three elements, aperture, shutter, and ISO. So to recap, shutter speed anywhere between 250 and 500 of a second will help to freeze the action. So lastly, this is the controversial part, I set the ISO to automatic and let the camera choose the ISO number. Now remember years ago, it was considered a terrible idea to use auto ISO because back in the day, even an ISO as low as 800 would give you lots of noise. But of course, sensors are so much better now and I don't worry about that so much. Uh, but I do limit the ISO to a maximum of 3200. So I let the camera select the ISO, 
but it won't go above 3,200. So as I say, it's that balancing act between those three elements. Now, if you don't understand that relationship, then of course, I have another Skillshare class, the fundamentals of photography, and you can always pop across and learn how to balance those three elements and links are in the description below. So to recap, anywhere between f8 and 11 for the aperture size, shutter speed, anything between 250 and 500 of a second, and I let the camera determine the ISO, so I'm on auto ISO. Now these are daylight settings, which is when I shoot the majority of my street photographs. Now obviously in the evening, it's a little bit different because using faster shutter speeds and smaller apertures could give you an underexposed shot. But as I say, most all of my street photographs are captured in daylight. Now as for focusing, I like to use the autofocus range limiter option. So what I've done is I've remapped the autofocus range limiter to the function button next to the shutter release button. Now using the range limiter, you can decide on your focus distance. Now there are two presets, and of course you can dial it in your own setting. Now I've found the best setting that works for me is one of the presets, and it's the two meters to infinity. Now that way, anything approximately two meters away from the camera will be in focus. And that combined with the aforementioned aperture size of f8 to f11 will guarantee that my subject is in focus and the majority of the background is in focus too. So it's great, I don't have to worry about where the focus point is and I can be so much more quicker and stealthy when I'm capturing my shots. Now again, another photographer will do it differently, but I think the autofocus range limiter certainly for street photography is a great option. Now I also set the camera to single point focus with the little switch at the side of the camera and then I access the quick menu and set the autofocus mode to wide and let the AF range limiter do its thing. Now at any time I can use the assign function button to access the AF range limiter to change the focus and distance and it all works brilliant. Now I don't do that for other types of photography but for street photography it works great. So as I say, the two meter to infinity works for me. And don't worry, you don't have to get a tape measure out before a shot. And as long as your subject is at least two meters away, you'll be fine. Now I've added some extras to the camera as well. I've added a nice little leather half case. Now you don't need it, but it does give you a better grip with this thick leather ridge. And of course, it all adds to that retro style and if you like that kind of thing. I've also pimped the shutter release button with this brass and wood screw in button. Now, do you need that? Now, of course you don't. But it's all about those retro looks. And there's loads of styles to choose from. Now, what was important to me was to add a filter on the front of the lens. Now, to do this, I first added a filter adapter kit, which allowed me to screw it in a filter. Well, with the filter in place, it helps to form a weatherproof seal. Now, how good that is, I don't know, but better safe than sorry. Now, I guess I could have chosen a standard UV filter, but I do like the Tiffin Promis filters. So I thought, hey, let's do something a little bit upmarket. So I opted for a Tiffin Black Promist at one quarter. So what does that do and do you need it? Well, you don't need it, but what it does is it softens the highlights and makes them bloom a little bit. Now, I do like that but any suitable filter would be fine. Adding that filter adapter also meant I could fit a traditional lens cap too. However, the only additional items you really need is extra batteries, of course. So to finish, I'll just show you a selection of my street photographs. And if you want to know more about how I captured them, then as I say, pop across to watch my Skillshare class, um, The Art of Street Photography, and the links are below. And the class will take you through all the techniques I use to capture those great street photographs. And of course, it's not all about the X100V. You can use any camera uh, to take part in the class. Okay, many thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.